teachers, Ben Jennings here, and we're on the last lesson in Mark, Mark, uh, the session 13, and it covers Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 14, and it's about the best thing you can end on. Jesus died, but then Jesus rose again, and that leads us to that objective statement we're going to say this week. Jesus Christ is not dead. He's alive. And three words describe the text and make this point that Jesus Christ is alive. The first one I'm going to talk about today is the word sought. You see that in the text here that these women, there are some women that went to anoint his body, but his body was not there because his body wasn't dead. It was alive. Um, you'll see that in Mark 16, 1 through 4, it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. I chose the word sought here. That's the word that the curriculum use, uses. And um, I, I want to point out why they chose that word. These women, it says they um, they were come in verse 1 and to anoint him. It talks about um, um, that uh, this is they, they, they came to anoint him, to, to anoint him. Um, they came under the sepulcher. Um, and they were even saying as they were coming, as they were seeking him um, to go just do what they could to take care of the body. It says that they were thinking logistically, like, how are we going to get that huge stone out of the way? Um, maybe there would be someone there that can do that for us, not knowing that, of course, someone had done it. Um, when they got there, they looking for Jesus's body, the stone was rolled away. So the first thing you see is these women seeking it. Seeking Jesus's body, of course, they're not going to find it. The second thing is the second word is risen, and as you look at verses five through eight, um, the angel tells them that he that Jesus he had risen from the dead. The word risen is used multiple times. Look at verse five, and entering into the sepulcher, because of course the stone was rolled away, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. The, the the scripture doesn't say this is an angel. We know it's an angel from looking at the other passages. And of course, there's some evidence here that they were scared because he's in this long white garment and they're, they're scared of him. That's a pretty common response to an angel. That's why they always say, fear not. Look at verse 6. And he saith unto them, be not affrighted, fear not. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is, what's the next word? Risen. He is risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter, that'll preach right there, uh, that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, and he, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. So you see um, this announcement of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And what an incredible thing that is. So you see risen in that. And then you see this last word, number three, seen. And Jesus appeared to his followers in bodily form. And uh, that, that idea of appearing shows up several times in verses 9 to 14. Now, when Jesus was risen, there's the word again, early in the morning, the first day of the week, he appeared. There it is. He was seen. To first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils, and she went and told them that he, that that had been with him as they mourned and wept, talking about the disciples who are weeping that Jesus was dead, and they, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen, there's the appearance again, seen of her, they didn't believe, they believed not, and after that he appeared, there's that word again. In another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went out and told unto the residue, neither believed that they them. Afterward he appeared, there he is seen again, unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not which had seen, there's the word again, appeared uh, him after he was risen. And then, of course, Mark 16, 15 is where we get 
the uh, Great Commission passage. He's telling them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. This good news that he's alive to every creature. So we see in a text that this is not uh, some spiritual resurrection. This is not some... Um, this is not some uh, hallucination. These are not even people who are like wanting, like like thinking that he's alive and, and out of their wishful thinking, seeing him alive. They are disbelieving and yet they're seeing him because he's physically appearing and because he's actually raised from the dead. They sought him. He appeared to them. He's risen and uh, they saw him. So that's just an ama- amazing, amazing thing. Jesus isn't dead. He is alive. And the Bible says that Jesus told them, because I live, you can live also. What an incredible thing to know that Jesus is alive. He died for our sins and he rose again. And so uh, I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you think through uh, how to teach this text. And uh, um, let's preach Christ crucified, buried, and risen again this Sunday. Thanks.